If you or a loved one have experienced mycotoxin exposure, also known as mold toxicity, you know how devastating that can be. And often we are looking at not only what can we do to help people who have mycotoxin exposure and mold toxicity, et cetera, but also why is it that you might have two people in the same house who get the same exposure to the mycotoxins and one is much more sick than the other one? So in this video, I want to answer questions that have come up around mycotoxins or mold toxicity. And in this one, I specifically want to look at glutathione and the role in both the preventive side of not getting mycotoxin-induced illness or getting less mycotoxin-induced illness, but also in the treatment side and some of the positives and negatives around glutathione in the realm of mycotoxin illness. So first off, let's start off with what is a mycotoxin and why would it give me all this illness? Well, mycotoxins are a form of what we call biotoxins. They come from the world around us and they are basically mold-derived toxins that usually will travel through the air and essentially poison you. So that doesn't sound very good, obviously. And so there's lots of biotoxins in the world, but mold have their own particular types. There are well-known forms of mycotoxin that can be lethal, deadly, and then there's other well-known forms that can have other immunologic and illness-creating problems inside of your body, etc. And so when we're looking at mycotoxins, if we can't prevent our exposure or minimize the exposure side, we are going to wind up having more potential illness. So one of the things to be thoughtful about is that mycotoxin exposure not only can disrupt the way our immune system works, mycotoxins often are directly immune suppressive. And the last thing that we want in a world where we have all sorts of opportunistic organisms and opportunistic infections and other things that can go on is to have our immune system, our first and second and third lines of defense, suppressed. Because then the next person who comes along and coughs something on you or the viruses or maybe some bacteria you already have in your body that have been there forever and not bothering you, suddenly they're going to start bothering you. So this this is why mycotoxicity and mold exposure and everything else is such a big deal and why it causes so much problem for people. So let's look at glutathione and mycotoxins from the point of view of potential for prevention or minimization and then cause and effect with mycotoxin type illness. The first thing is and this is, if you do any searches and say glutathione and mycotoxin protection, usually you'll get papers about this or nowadays AI written summaries, some of which are good and some are not. But the bottom line of these things is that the reason that we're not always consistently reacting to mycotoxins is partly the amount of mycotoxin, but also the fact our body makes its own glutathione, and glutathione helps us in the protective portions of our oxidation reduction antioxidant system in the balancing of our immune system and all number of other things. So if I have reasonable levels of glutathione going on and I have have the genetics and uh, the intake of substrate and everything to make my glutathione function really well, I often in the research it'll show I have a lower amount of sensitivity to mycotoxins. This is why it's not uncommon for us to see a family and maybe everybody's affected, but they're affected in different ways by mycotoxin exposure. Or I've even seen cases where one person is greatly affected and the other person living in the same environment doesn't seem to have anything wrong. Now, usually they have something going on, but they don't seem to have a ton wrong. So glutathione can be preventive on that side. Now, what were the predicates I said 
what helps me to be more preventive of mold? Well, some of it is within your control. That would be the intake of nutrients that help to form glutathione and cycle it. And that's going to be things like the amino acid cysteine and uh, glycine and glutamine. That's going to include a whole bunch of your vitamins and minerals to help it cycle, all that stuff. But then there's parts that we don't have as much control over, which are genetics. And so genetics are the, the code or the roadmap. And then epigenetics are what turns on and off the roadmap. So if you've got some genetics for some weak glutathione forming genes and those get turned on and guess what one thing that'll turn them on is? Mold exposure, as well as other toxicities, et cetera, and stress. But if you turn those things on, then what's going to happen is over time, you get less and less efficient glutathione function and cycling, and then you become an easier target even though you have enough glutathione in your body to stay alive, if you get exposure to the mycotoxins, you're an easier target genetically. Very, very important on the prevention side. The other thing is, which is sort of a catch-22 cycle, is that the presence of mycotoxins reduce the amount of glutathione available in your body. So remember I said that they epigenetically will turn on your bad glutathione formation and cycling genes. Well, the other thing is they directly, usually through non-genomic factors, will decrease the availability of glutathione in your body. So if glutathione is preventive and then the mold uh, mycotoxin is decreasing it, that's a double whammy. It's turning on my bad glutathione genes and it's decreasing my glutathione. So that's not so good. Now, the other thing is normally when your body is dealing, we all encounter mycotoxins and we don't always notice. When our body is dealing with mycotoxins and you know, mold, the normal thing for the body to do is to try and bioconvert the toxin and help to get rid of it. Now, it's a multi-step process, but one of the more important parts of that multi-step process is going to be the use of glutathione to help us some of the intermediate steps to get rid of the mycotoxin. And so glutathione is not only on the preventive side, but also on the treatment side. So you'll often see people using glutathione or glutathione precursors in mycotoxin illness or mold treatment. Now, what is a potential caution with just dumping a whole bunch of glutathione into somebody who's got a lot of mycotoxin mold exposure? Well, if it's early in the game and you, you know, you can help what comes in be bioconverted and go out, sometimes you don't notice a problem with glutathione. If you dump a whole bunch of glutathione in someone who has a lot of mycotoxin illness backed up, then what you can do is you can turn on, remember what I said is glutathione is a part of getting rid of a biotoxin like a mycotoxin. It's not the whole pathway. And so sometimes if I have a lot built up, or a lot of exposure that I'm getting, and then I plug in one member of the elimination pathway, but not all of them, like glutathione, I can feel really sick because I start to mobilize a lot of mycotoxin, and some of it will leave, and some of it will get stuck in the middle, and it's a nasty chemical that's either an intermediate or the original mycotoxin, and now I'm just dealing with more of it acutely. So if you've ever had the experience of, maybe you did or didn't know that you had mycotoxin exposure and you read about supporting glutathione or taking glutathione or something, and then you got really, really sick, a lot of times it's because there were other pieces of the elimination puzzle that were not really well supported by the glutathione that you took. So it wasn't glutathione's bad. It's that glutathione needs a lot of other support to help you get rid of the mycotoxin. Now, some of the things that help glutathione not get things stuck would be things to improve mobilization, so the movement out of the tissues of your mycotoxins. And that could be things like moving your body around, sweating, heat therapies, hot and cold like hydrotherapy, stuff like that. Sometimes there's other things to help move the mycotoxins that might be herbal detox supports you might do and whatever. So just like with glutathione, if that's all you do, sometimes you get in trouble because you get 
heart stuck. Then there's supporting glutathione kind of from a 360 degree point of view, which is glutathione's great, but glutathione uses tons of other nutrients to keep cycling. And if we have a lot of toxin, like a mycotoxin, and we mobilize it, then we put glutathione in, and the glutathione only cycles once or twice and then gets stuck, then we just build up a lot of these nasty intermediates and we feel horrible. So in addition to supporting or giving glutathione, we need a number of the B vitamins to support the cycling of glutathione. We need vitamin C. Remember, humans don't make vitamin C, and so we need lots of vitamin C when we're cycling glutathione. We need a little bit of vitamin E, which is not water-soluble, but we need a little bit of vitamin E for the fat-soluble membranes, and that will help then the glutathione to cycle. But then these are big, kind of cumbersome chemical toxins. So on the other side of the detox glutathione pathway, a lot of them are going to get sent out into our digestive system through our bile. So what's going to happen is we're going to bioconvert them. Some of them will get taken from the liver proper where the glutathione and stuff is working and be shoved out into the bile, which usually we use bile to digest our fats. And so the bile is a great place to detox large molecules. Well, if it goes out in, during your digestion and the bile is there and it's helping digest fats, but it's also full of mycotoxin intermediates or downstream elimination chemicals, if there's not enough binder there, then the bile will release these nasty toxic chemicals and they will go back into your bloodstream. So you can get all the way through and you can support the movement eliminatory process. You can support the glutathione and the detox at the chemical level. But if you don't have something to bind it up when the bile's trying to take it out, it will recirculate and you'll be poisoned again. You're auto-intoxicated, which is really not something that you want. So when we're doing this and we do the mobilization things, whether it's sauna or near and far infrared, exercise, other sweating, hydrotherapy, etc., herbs, then we support glutathione from a 360 point of view. We also want to make sure we have fiber and other binders going through so that we hold on to those nasty mycotoxin chemicals. And what happens if we bind them up? Then they go out through your colon and they go out in the feces and we don't reabsorb them, which is why you need all of these steps in the process to effectively deal with mold and mycotoxins as they're going through. All right, this was fun. I hope it answered those questions that we got about mycotoxins and glutathione. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Please do consider subscribing if you haven't. Thanks to all our subscribers. See you on the next one.